do here is we're going to use the uh, 2D game kit from Unity to demonstrate how easy it is to add game driver automation to your projects. And then we're going to run through a, a very simple scenario and show you the, the power of that, that automation. So first step here is to import the game driver package into my project. And I've got that ready here. I simply leave it default and import. And while that's loading, uh, I'll explain the process uh, first. We add the game driver agent into our project in the very first scene that's loaded, uh, and we only add it once. So once this is done importing, uh, I simply go to my uh, root of my my first scene here and I'm going to add an empty game object to that object here and that's the we'll call this game driver um, and then we simply add a component to that object which is these under scripts unity agent game driver IO unity agent and these are all of the configuration settings that are exposed to uh, the test to the, the project itself for game driver the rest is controlled through the automated tests directly. So we're going to use the Unity engine logging here and capture input events. This is used for us uh, to be able to see what a manual tester, what actions they would perform uh, so that we can bring that those actions into our uh, test automation. And I don't need to do anything else here. This is all of the configuration that's required. So I'm going to very quickly jump over to Visual Studio where I have an end unit test set up. And this is just a very simple test with three attributes, a one-time setup uh, test, and then a one-time teardown. The next step is for me to bring in the game driver uh, reference, API reference, excuse me. Uh, and this I have saved on my desktop. And this allows me to uh, send commands uh, directly to my Unity project, uh, whether it's running within the editor or as a standalone. So I'm going to set my using directive there for gdio.unityapi. And now I have access to all of the methods within our API to start my automation. The first step here is uh, using API dot, and I can see all of those methods, but we're not going to go through each of those today. You can see more on the documentation available at gamedriver.io. Uh, but we're going to wait for game. And this is how we uh, connect to the editor. We're in this case, use localhost. Now, as that implies, we're able to actually connect to other machines using their IP address or host name. Uh, and this allows me to test from Windows to Mac, Mac to Windows, Windows to Windows, etc. But also, more importantly, to test from a build server to uh, a group of machines that may be uh, available specifically for testing. Next is uh, we're going to enable keyboard hooks and mouse hooks. This allows us to inject our input into the game itself, into the project. And then we're going to wait a second. And that's captured in milliseconds there. I dot wait. Now the next step for me to do something is to verify that I'm in fact connected. I'm going to wait for an object to appear, but I might not know the name of that object. So I'm going to jump back to my game for a second and I'm looking for what's uh, the start button here, which would be the first thing I, I would need to click as a tester. And I can see as if I search for start button in the hierarchy, uh, but I don't know exactly the path to that. So I'm going to right click, and this is a feature of Game Driver, the hierarchy path, and I'm going to choose the, the relative path to that object. And Game Driver uh, outputs that path for me. And this is a very familiar kind of X path like structure here that we call hierarchy path or H path that allows me to interact with those objects. Jump back to my test for a second. And we simply add that statement or that, that object path to the wait for object method call and we're ready. 
we're, we're connected, we're going to wait for this object to appear, but, it, but it, now I need to do something. So I'm going to click on that object using API dot click object, supplying the same path as I did above. And the next uh, step is to select the mouse button. So which mouse button do I want to use here? In this case, the left mouse button. And I could specify the number of uh, frames that I want to hold that for or the max seconds argument, but we're just going to leave this default. And I'm going to wait a moment. And then let's take a screenshot. Now, normally um, we would insert some assertions here to make sure we're connected and do something more um, interactive, but we're just trying to get things started here. We'll get to that in just a moment. Now, the last step in any test is to do the teardown. So we're going to disable keyboard hooks. We're going to disable mouse hooks. And then we're going to quit. Let everything catch up. And then we're done. That's all we need to test uh, that we can connect to the, the game, the, the project running in Unity. So let's click start here. Take my hands off the keyboard for a second. And we should see play mode initiated as it just has. The game's going to start running and then the mouse button was clicked. Now that was very quick. Things flew by there and there's a lot of information below that, could, like I said, can be used for, for building our automation, for, for seeing what steps were captured if I was to test this manually. But we're not going to cover this for now.